Ladies and gentlemen, Jeffrey Slater is about to come on. This guy is a freaking champion. He's going to talk to you about mastering sales and speaking, being able to sell more, being able to influence, communicate who you are, and really impact people at a massively deep level. Before we dive into the conversation with him, though, I'm talking to you because you're becoming your greatest possible self. So number one, I acknowledge you for showing up. I acknowledge you for taking the steps. I acknowledge you for doing the best that you can with the knowledge, the resources, the gifts, the skills, everything, the life experience that you have had up until this point. So keep showing up, keep taking the steps, and keep listening, tuning in, going to the events, having conversations, you know, taking those next steps, messaging people like Jeffrey and saying like what your biggest takeaways are, how you're growing, what your challenges are, ask for help. I say that's one of the biggest things that's helped me along my journey is when I raise my hand and when I ask for help and when I ask for support saying, hey, I may not be succeeding at the level that I want to, so that's helped me to get to where I want to go. And also I know when I didn't ask for help, that's what kept me at a certain level. So reach out, connect, have these powerful conversations with people like Jeffrey and these other guests who are on the marathon. Okay. That's my massive encouragement for you in this episode. Second thing we're going to do is talk about the iTunes review of the week. This week, it's by Joshua Lysick, and Joshua says there's personal development, and then there's GPS. Chris, I loved your chat with Martha. Every tip to build rapport with romantic partners works in business. In love, you want yes. So it is in sales. Thank you for bringing on guests whose advice applies to 99.99% of life. P.S. You are so high energy. I feel the room come alive as I listen, 100%. Joshua, Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Love you tuning in. And for you tuning in right now, if you want the honor of getting shouted out on a future 12-hour live stream and thanked and appreciated for making this dream a reality, the greatest possible self, the 12-hour marathon, the live stream, um, I, I would love to honor you by saying thank you for tuning in, by sharing your review. To leave a review, go to beergps.com forward slash iTunes or search greatest possible self on the Apple Podcast Store and give us a review. Subscribe so you can get all the latest episodes and updates. And and definitely stay tuned, stay connected, and stay plugged in. I'm going to introduce Jeffrey in just a second here. Grab a freaking paper and grab a pen. This pen and this paper that you're about to write these notes with, it could be worth thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars when you implement these things that we're going to talk about with Jeff in this interview. So definitely stay tuned all the way through to the end because one idea literally has the power to change everything in your life, in your business, in your finances, in your relationships, everything. Okay, so stay tuned because I know this is going to be a deep, profound interview with Jeffrey. Let's interview him, uh, introduce him. Jeffrey Slater is known as a researcher of leadership, explorer, and educator to maximize leaders' potential in, from, in selling on one-on-one on the stage and having played the role of transformational coach for the last 15 years to over a million people from 12 different countries, exploring and studying a range of different transformational modalities. He has shared the stage with other incredible thought leaders like Sir Richard, Richard Branson, founder of Virgin. If you, if you didn't know that, I don't know where you've been. <laughs> Dr. Martini, star of the movie The Secret. Frank Kern, the highest paid direct response internet marketer in the world. Tim Ferriss, author of The 4-Hour Workweek, Work Week, Tony Robbins, and many others. He is also a best-selling author. But all that is just the tip of the iceberg, and we're going to go deep, deep, deep into the subconscious mind and underneath the iceberg in this. Jeffrey, are you ready to rock the house, my man? I'm really excited. It's so good to be on this with you. And it's good to see you back from Bali, ready to go. So Dude. thanks for having me on the show. Dude, absolutely. Thank you for being here. And uh, you are, you know, you really inspired me, our conversation before I went, like just all that you've done, all that you've seen, building businesses, kind of like breaking them down, rede rediscovering yourself, knowing who you are. Like it's it just really, I see you as someone who's like a couple steps ahead of me who I'm like, man, you're, you're living the life. You're just really, truly being your greatest possible self. So uh, I really acknowledge you for that, Jeffrey. And it goes right in today's theme, which is an extraordinary life. And I want to hear what does that that mean for you, Jeffrey? I, well, that's my, that's for me and my term. And just so everyone is comprehensive, what I'm saying is everyone has their own definition of what extraordinary life is. And it's for us to discover what that is. Mm. So for me, an extraordinary life is, is removing things that aren't extraordinary. You know, it's, mm. it's, it's about removing, not necessarily adding. It's, it's, I find myself getting, getting more clarity with really knowing what I don't like to do. What I don't like to do is, is live a life of, of where it's normal. It's very mundane. Mm. And we're just, you know, for me, I, I love being able to work with people like yourself and 
and take adventures and speak on stages and share things that help amplify people's purposes and, and what they're here to do. Yeah. Um, I, I like and something some things that that might, other people might think are are pretty uh, simple. You know, like I love spending time around the fire. I like going to the jungles, deep in down adventures. I like oh, there's just so many things. I, I just I could go on and on, but an extraordinary <laughs> life is. It's for each of us to discover, and I'm still discovering my story. Life. <laughs> Dude, we need to have a campfire when you come out here uh, next next year. If you're coming, I would love to. to I'm do coming. A- I'm coming <laughs> out there. I'm definitely come back. <laughs> would love to do a campfire, man. I love I love nature, and what a what a beautiful you know place to be. And I think that's like going back to the tribal days when we would just sit around a campfire and tell stories and connect with people uh, who who we liked, who appreciated, who we loved, who we you know just wanted to be around. And I love how you said um, removing things that aren't extraordinary. And I want people to to write this down because I think from the very beginning of our life, we have our own internal GPS. And along the journey, we pick up all this crap that other people tell us is what we want and what we should should have and be and do in our life. And so to remove those things and just reconnect with what is already within us and trust that source and that internal guidance, I think that's the best way to live an extraordinary life, man. I'm really glad you brought that up because people are so afraid of of discovering what their version of extraordinary life is often. Mm-hmm. I know I was as well. And, and removing things can be scary, yeah. you know, and it's, it's a, it's a, the reason that I like the word extraordinary because it's a high bar. Yeah. And so, and so I just like to keep the bar as high as possible for the people in my life and the experiences in my life. And if, it's, if it doesn't feel uh, extraordinary, then, then I'm question it. And yeah. I want to move to either move the bar up or cut it out. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I love this because it's gonna go um, back into into your journey in just a second because like you set that bar extraordinarily high and it yeah. probably was a, an unhealthy uh, way and drive in, yes. in the beginning. Yes. Um, but before we go into the journey, I just want to recap for people who are just getting connected with you. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you're doing today with speaking, with um, live events, just so they can know right off the bat who you are, sure. what you stand for, man? Of course. So I, our ability to communicate is directly proportional to the level of success we'll have. Mm. And the ability to communicate impacts our sales, impacts our speaking on stages. Mm. And when I say stages, I don't mean just stages with thousands of people. I mean podcasts. Yeah. I mean Facebook Lives, uh, interviews on television. So what I, what I love focusing on right now is supporting people in, gain, in getting clarity in their communication. So they can sell more, make more money, and make more impact. Yeah, and I love it. And so I do trainings in, um, in parts of the, in different parts of the world, specifically on um, communication in areas of sales and speaking. And mm-hmm. after working with over a million people, uh, I, I've re- I've really discovered that I've made a lot of mistakes on the way, mm-hmm. and I can help people collapse time frames so they can so they can learn more in less time, and they can make make more money in less time. And, uh, and so people, I'm the go-to person that I generally get the phone call when someone says, I'm going to be on stage with a couple thousand people, Jeff, mm-hmm. and I have one hour. What do I say? Damn. And, you know, there's tens of thousands of dollars, a hundred thousand dollars in line. Or I'm the guy that, get, that gets a phone call from a CEO that's running a $10 million company that needs to present a new pivot with their company. And how do they present that in an inspiring way? Or, or, or I'm also the person that someone calls and that is a consultant or service professional and they, they say, you know, I want to start selling fifteen thousand dollar memberships, thirty thousand dollar memberships to high ticket price items. How do I communicate that in an effective way? And so, 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 I'm really that person that people call in order to sell more and make more money, so they can make the impact they're really actually here here for. And I love it because I amplify other people's purposes. It's really yeah, fun. Dude, what, what, what better way to live life, not just to be a king, so to speak, but the king yeah. maker who's like really reminding people how, how we all have this massive potential, massive gifts to give to the world. And if we just unblock ourselves and, and free ourselves to stay in our gifts and communicate that effectively and enroll other people in a, in a new vision of their life and the benefits they, they can experience through our products and services, that is like our highest and best good it's, work that we can do, man. It's such a privilege to yeah. do because I, I get to sometimes sit back and be in the audience when one of my clients or someone that's attended one of my trainings is on stage with a thousand plus people and I'm just like wow like yeah to be able to have made a played a part in that and then it's like a starfish you know it's this ripple effect like yep. you can't stop it and you know there's a saying you, you actually can't kill a starfish by cutting it up in a thousand you can't kill a starfish by cutting it up 
because when you cut up a starfish, it creates more starfish. Mm -hmm. And ultimately what happens is, is, is like when I'm able to transfer my life's work to that person so I can, so, so they can find the people they're here to work with mm -hmm. and clearly communicate how to work with them and identify those people. Then ultimately it's just ripple effect. It's unstoppable. It's, yeah. it's like decentralized. <laughs> love it. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. It's the it's the exponential, the like yeah. infinite possibilities. Like I just I see your your mind and all the the work that you've done and you know experiences and awakenings that you've gone through. Just like yeah. you, you're connected to that to that infinite potential and possibility that we all have within us, and you're just here to keep actualizing that in yourself and people around you, man. So I want to go back into your journey, Jeffrey, and talk about uh, what was the beginning of like this drive to to become your greatest possible self, to live an extraordinary life. Where did that really begin for you, man? I think it began for me out of fear at the beginning. Mm. I was scared of not being enough. I was scared I wasn't. Um, I was one of those kids in schools that that, that kind of like a C level student, you know. And I, I struggled in class, and I never and I, and school didn't make a lot of sense to me because it didn't feel very fun, and um, I felt stupid. I felt like, uh, and so I really had to go prove myself, you yeah. know. But it, I, I was really proving myself to other people, but really I was trying to prove myself to myself because cause deep down I, I didn't feel like I was enough. I didn't feel adequate enough. I didn't feel like I was smart enough. I didn't feel like I was tall enough. You know, there's just so many insecurities that are yep. coming up. And, yep. and what drove me to to hustle was to was to prove that I was enough. And so it drove me to the biggest stages in the world, you know, hmm. teaching, training, leadership, and transformation. But then there was a point when I went, oh, no matter how many people give me an applause or hmm. – how much money is made or recognition or certain material things I get, I'm not going to be any happier. Now, everyone probably listening has heard this before, but but when you – I read it before. But when you go through it, you're like, it's really – it was very empty. And and I remember getting off stage, actually. Um, my goals one of my goals. I, tend, I, you know, I think Tony Robbins is an incredible trainer. So he was very inspiring for me at, at the beginning because I watched a lot. Of my, and, and I went to UPW, like, I don't know how many times – Six or seven times I brought all my friends. And I'm like, one day I'm going to do that, you know. And then, and then, so my one of my inflection points or or life goals was to be on stage with Tony Robbins. And I was in London, and, there, and he was there, and we got and we got off stage. We got on stage after him, and and oh my gosh, it was it, there was it was it was amazing because at the time, and we we blew off confetti. It was crazy, and it was, and then and I got off stage, and I went back to my hotel, and I just felt empty. I'm like, whoa. And, you know, it had nothing to do with Tony. You know, he's great. It had to do with me and my, and my, my own goal. Wow. And I felt empty. I felt like, what was this all for? Mm -hmm. And and I realized that it's just something that's like, no matter what we do, no matter how many applauses we get, we have to discover our own, our own value or love for ourselves right yeah yeah the, the yeah. inner inner joy inner fulfillment inner peace even to not to not need to get somewhere anymore and like it's easy to say that but how do you embody that how do you live that that's like that's the life journey <laughs> and you know it was so confusing because i had read so many books yeah and meditate i have a meditation practice for the last like i don't know how many years 20 15 20 years and uh I read so many books. I had done so many trainings and so many transformations. I was even training people in transformation, and yet I still had this. And that was even more confusing for me. I was like, "Why am I not fulfilled? This is crazy. I've done so much personal development, so much work, and I'm mm. still not." And and that's actually when I I started to choose. I started to kind of look at taking some time off, and 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 to and and to stop and reflect and and integrate all mm. the experiences I've had, and. Uh, and realize that the hustle is the hustle is not all it's cracked up to be, cracked mm. up to be, you know. But mm. of course we have to work. We have to be. But I've never moved from hustle to flow. Yeah. And uh, and and I, and I spent a lot of time in the jungles. I spent a lot of time with incredible indigenous people as well, learning as well. And then and, and I started to remember the gift and the celebration of life itself. But mm. but I wasn't driven by my. I wasn't. I stopped being driven. Street driven. And right. I, when I stopped, when that drive started to go away, I started to worry. Like, because I, I, my whole identity was about being a driven hustler. And, and when that drive started to burn out, I was really worried. I was like, Am I ever going to want to do anything again? Mm -hmm. Like, what is my what is my reason for being here? And then and then there was like this 
high level functioning depression that happened. Like it was just like, mm. like this lull. And, uh, and I had to sit with it. It was very uncomfortable. It was uh, challenging and sad. Yeah. And uh, I felt really pretty lost actually. And, uh, and, and, I, and it was really even more confusing because I'm the guy that's supposed to support people in, in finding clarity. Yeah. And so here I was experiencing loss and I realized it was my own shadow. Mm. And, and I had to go through my own shadows. And I found a lot of medicine in my own darkness as well. I used to mm-hmm. not. I used to avoid, want to avoid the, you know, the, the those things, those feelings. But then I was like, this time I'm just going to go into them. I'm just going to go into them. And through that darkness, I discovered something beyond purpose, mm-hmm. something beyond the hospital, something beyond uh, achievement. And from that place, anything's possible. Dude. But it's not about what's what I want. It's about what's what what is being. It's it's ultimately what's running through us. Coming, yeah, coming through us, wanting to be expressed, some infinite yes. potential higher consciousness saying, "Hey, we're just a vessel here. Stop trying to control everything." And and like the ego saying, "This is how my life is supposed to be." When when that happens, we're a limited personality. Versus when we get out of our own way and say whatever is the highest and best good for consciousness and humanity and you know love to come through today what does that look like in my being and being an open channel to receive that i think so many people are closed off to being that conduit i i am i know i'm still working uh, on that I, I, I work on that every day it's so scary because because i i really didn't trust the unknown yeah and the wow. more i trust the unknown the more magic happens i mean it's magic now wow. and I, I can't even but, but i have to be willing to sit in the unknown and trust because I was so afraid of losing control and 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 I never, and then I realized through my experiences um, you know the jungles with executives and then also with time of myself I was never in control in the first place mm. I really thought I was and, and that was an illusion itself and and now you know let life unfold is is pretty wild it's like and it unfolds better than I can even imagine I mean but of course you have to get things done. You have to learn yes. the tech. You have to learn the basics. You know, you have to you have to actually do things. You can't just sit and meditate on a cushion. I mean, that's ridiculous. Right. You have to actually, you know, set set some intentions. But it's weird because when I when I actually when I actually write things down now, I, I I'm asking what's in my highest good, mm. and the universe, the, the 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 world around us is like a perfect accounting system. Mm. And it, as long as I do what's in my highest good for me and my journey, then the universe will take care of everyone else's highest good. Mm. Or, or the world around us. And I find it pretty incredible. And I find more and more executives and, and, and hype and busy professionals that are making things happen. Well, they're beginning to, they're beginning to see that they were never in control. Mm. Mm. And the ones that are really fixed in being, being in control are usually, are, they usually get a really big wake up call. And they might yeah. make a lot of money, but they end up with a health problem. Yeah. They end up with anxiety. They end up losing marriages, losing families, things like that. And, but, and, 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 and because their need to control, always it, it, it's hiding usually a fear and they have to face that fear that fear of, the, of that fear of the unknown yeah and i remember i remember like I'm, I'm also a guy that i get the phone call that goes that goes or the email that says um i want to go i want to privately work with a small group of people um and i want to go to i want to have incredible experiences and adventures in the jungle and i want to discover life's biggest questions and uh, and so I'll take so sometimes as a, I'll do some of that work because I love it, and they come back answering life's biggest questions, which is they stop asking so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> and and by doing that, they unfold and they start to trust wow. the unknown again. When they trust mm-hmm. the unknown again, their businesses change and they develop more empathy. Yeah. And when they develop more empathy, because they realize there's a symbiotic relationship with everyone around them, and when they develop that empathy, they're their their employees um, start to actually retain they they, they retain top employees mm. because because a place has more I guess you could say heart yeah and and then they develop more self awareness and with more self awareness their leadership and their ability to lead becomes more effective they actually breed more leaders versus having to be the one in control um, and they stop making demands on their teams they make requests so that their team is more respected because demands are a forcing where a request is like they're invited in to, yeah. to for the vision. Versus demanding them to to do the things, so much happens with increased self awareness, and so much happens with increased empathy, and also their sales, their ability to communicate, go up. Everything changes. Yeah. It's amazing. 
It's amazing. And Jeffrey, you you spent like what was it years, um, like rediscovering yourself in in jungles and that that type of environment. Was it how how many years did you what, were you on uh, that journey? I mean, I've I've been. <laughs> I don't even know. I mean, I first started meditating when I was twenty, so it's. Um, I don't know when it began because I think it's all it's kind of just been there as a seed. Yeah. Um, but I started really uh, going to take executive jungles from about five years ago yeah. and going through pretty incredible experiences. But that's pretty, that was pretty humbling and pretty amazing. And, and I knew that I had to go through the experiences myself if I'm going to, if I'm going to obviously go there do that. But it's amazing what's happening. We're merging the immature world with the material world. It'll bring it together. Mm. And mm. it's this midpoint and this inflection point. You know, some of the some of the Asian ones call it the prophecy of the condor and eagle, hmm. but um, but uh, but what it, I mean, they, they'll tell the stories far better than I will. But the short version is 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 this is really the time we merge the head with the heart. Yes, and this and these these cultures in the jungles and the Amazon are really they represent the heart, hmm. the heart of of humanity, and the Western world represents the mind. Yeah, and if we and if we can have if we can clean, if we can have a uh, pure, like rediscover our hearts and then have our mind not run us, but our hearts can. Yes. Then we get this beautiful merging that happens and something new is born. Mm -hmm. And if we can do that with, we, if we can take that journey from our minds to our hearts, uh, ourselves, we then, we then, it has a ripple effect in our companies. And so it's, Yes, it's been a while. Yeah. And, well, I, I think the, the reason, learning. the reason why I ask is because I think you, 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 went so far out of alignment with your heart that you said, whoa, I got to stop everything and go back yeah. to that stillness, go back to my darkness, go back to rediscovering myself and like the productivity that you, you were afraid of like losing your drive because you spent and invested so much time in reconnecting with yourself. And I think that's one yeah. way to do it. And I also think for people who are listening right now, they might just feel an inkling that they might be out of alignment. They might be operating more from the head. They might not be living from their heart, totally trusting, totally in alignment. And of course, there's always more room to grow with that. Uh, but I think they don't have to go so far out of whack to finally say, shit, I need to get back to center, to, to love, to source, to my heart. And I think you having that experience can guide them through that, that process to get them back to realigned without the drastic kind of uh, way out of whack. Yeah, they don't need to go so far far over yeah uh, it's, it's for the people it also could go the other way you know mm. you can get ultra spiritual too yeah so as far as you can go over as far as you can go over to hustling and making lots of money you mm. can also swing over to the other side which is like ultra spiritual and and like and, and it turns into actual spiritual bypassing yeah where you're not actually feeling things you're not actually feeling things you're not actually ex excavating there's a great book by jeff brown called um, grounded spirituality where where people avo people avoid experiencing excavating their their emotions wow. and they use they they use meditation practices and other things and to avoid it and so I know I've done that myself and and it's just part of the journey so I've I've swung both polarities yeah and then we've settled on the midpoint and and and, and it, it was a beautiful journey and it's a continuous journey but watch both sides ultra spiritual ultra just about making money and there's something that happens when you can actually merge the two in a healthy way with your feet in the ground mm. and 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 that's ultimately when we come we, we actually go back to the kind of the basics but it's much more exciting like sales and speaking and yeah things of that nature in order so we can do our work in the world we're here in this reality and it's important and, and this physical reality is just as important as the as the non-physical yeah what is it what does it look like practically to to face the darkness what, what can someone do on a daily weekly monthly basis to fake their face their shadow to really sit with that to be with that how can someone create an environment a time a space an intention process to to go through that oh yeah and everyone's slightly different i would i would actually suggest people read the book uh grounded spirituality by jeff brown okay um it's a it, it'll because because we only have so much time here, but people can dive into that. If if, if there's it's, it's an excavation work, it's a hmm. digging deep into yourself and feeling what doesn't want to be felt. Hmm. You know, for for myself, like it's a uh, moving in. It's it's really diving deep into like that repression and that sadness. And sometimes it can look pretty. There's not a, there's not really a safe container in this Western world to be able to let things go. You know, when I was a child, when I was uh, eight eighteen, I was so grateful that I met this woman. And, uh, and, and I had, as a kid, you know, we hold on to things. Like I had a, 
I had a pet mouse when I was a child and it sounds so simple, but it died on me. And I had a fish when I was a child and that died. And, uh, and I held on to that, mm-hmm. you know, and I didn't even know what it was. And I was, I met this woman who was pretty wise. I was about 18 and she's like, come, come into, come into um, this space. And she asked me questions and she goes, well, how do you feel about that? I was like, Whoa. I, I, was, I was like, what do you talk about feel, you know? And she goes, well, well, you lost your mouse. And I was like, yeah, I lost my mouse. It died. And she goes, well, how do you feel about that? And it was really hard because I couldn't, I didn't want to feel it as a kid. And then she goes, well, let's just try something. I'm like, what do you mean? And she grabbed this like hose, okay? And, and a punching bag. And she goes, I just want you to, I just want you to raise this hose and punch the bag. Because I had all this anger inside of me yeah. about these things that happened. And I started, she just, I started punching the bag and then she started like going, feel, feel. And she started actually like putting her hand on my heart and everything. And I was just, all these emotions came up that I didn't know how to feel. And I didn't, I felt out of control. And I just started sobbing about this pet mouse and then how it died. And then I was sobbing about the fish. And I just was like, all this energy was coming out of my body, but it was actually stored energy was pain from a loss, you know, because I used to think that because I. I, I care. It was weakness. You know, like, oh, he's, he was crying about his pet mouse. Mm. Actually, it's, because I care is my biggest strength. And for everyone here, if you, have, if you care about things that are tender to your heart and things that matter, it's actually a strength. Yes. But I made it a weakness, so I walled off. And she just kept going and excavating it out. And I just started to sob and sob and sob. And that was some of my darkness, you know. And it, I felt more free. And, and instead of that energy being – all that energy I stored up was was stored in pain and mm. depression and a wall. That energy got reallocated towards my intuition. Yeah. And then that's when I actually started to actually be able to follow my path more effectively. And that's mm. when I started to actually trust myself more because I could listen. If we're filled with pain that has not been excavated, if we're filled with sadness that has not been excavated, ultimately it's hard to hear our own intuition. Mm. Damn. So I, I just am grateful for her. Yeah, and yeah, man. And so that's an example of the kind of work. And then also the other work is time with yourself, time in nature. And also a wise medicine man that said said to me once, you know, like, when, you know, when, when when was the last time you danced? Mm. When was the last time you listened to music? When was the last time you spent time around fire? You know, all the simple things. But what I've really found that's quite interesting is that we all have a – we're all like snowflakes. Mm-hmm. We're made of the same substance yet different patterns. It is our responsibility. Yet the more we can take, as Jordan Peterson says, the more mm-hmm. we can take responsibility for, for, for doing what we're our part in this world, for imprinting this what we're here to do. For me, it's speaking, sharing. For you, it's 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 speaking and sharing and coaching and you know bringing incredible guests on shows and mm-hmm. that's your that's what you're here for, right? And the more you the more we take responsibility for what we're here for. And I love taking responsibility for amplifying other people's purposes and sharing mm-hmm. a message. The, level, the, the more fulfillment we're actually going to have in our life. So, so the challenge is there are people listening to this that learn about making money. They learn about what's possible. They, they, they make their vision boards. Or they, they, they see what's possible in their companies and take them from a you know, million dollars to a hundred million dollars. But they're not doing the work. Mm-hmm. And that gap gets bigger and bigger. And if they don't take responsibility for for implementing that, no matter how scary it is, then they actually get they actually get even more sad and frustrated than the people who have no idea. Yeah. Because so so we need to when we we have the gift of being able to move, like Einstein says, logic will get you from A to Z, imagination will get you everywhere else. Mm-hmm. And if we have the ability to envision, which is the people listening to this, we are the visionaries. We have, a, we have a responsibility to close that gap. Mm. And, it, and in order to close that gap, we must be willing to drudge up the shadows. We must be willing to, to sell, which is scary for people. We mm. must be willing to speak, which is often scary for people. We must do the things we're most afraid of. Use our fears or where you feel those butterfly moments as where to go next. Yes. And so if we do that and we seek butterfly moments in our life, we are then taking responsibility to be our imprint. And when we take responsibility and full accountability for being that imprint, even though it's scary, we then, we then experience deep, deep fulfillment. And it's amazing. And we inspire others to do the same. 
It's gold, so it's, gold, yes, man. Yeah. I love it. I'm, I'm loving um, what you shared about Jordan Peterson, like being the imprint that we're here to be. Like, what is our dharma? What is our our, yeah. our purpose in this life? And to just continually be in in um, surrender of that and allowing that to come through is, I think, is the is the journey, man. And to do the basics that we've been been taught and told that we might be looking over, we might be neglecting, like dancing and singing and you know jolting yes. and getting getting re connected with our body, um, like removing stuck stored energy that is locked up both in, you know, psychological things that are stuck from the past, as well as just like being able to mobilize the energy through different like physical processes and breathing, like breathing is so freaking powerful, man. There's so many accesses to these, but like you said, it just unlocks people to live their purpose and share their greatest gifts. Yeah, it, it really does. In fact, I had a woman, I was on stage yesterday and there's a woman who, who, um, basically teaches online marketing and she does lots of videos and things. And and I got her on stage and she was talking about what she did, but there was, there was, it was like, she couldn't be in the silence either. Mm. So she had, because she couldn't be in the silence, her words didn't have much weight. No. So if we don't have, if we can't sit in silence then we really have nothing to say. So, so she, she couldn't sit in silence. And um, so her words were just kind of landing over the audience. And uh, and what it was was actually, it's because she wasn't breathing. Mm. So all I, so what I do when I work with some of these executives to present more effectively, even on the stage, I had her get on stage and just like stay in silence for a, a couple of minutes. She had never done that. She was so afraid because her critter brain was so loaded up with fear because it's actually natural for a human being when there's a lot of eyes on them. Like if you're presenting, here's a tip for people. If you're presenting in front of like 20 people or let's say, you know, 2,000 people, mm -hmm. if there's a lot of eyes, our, our brain is actually trained to actually go into a fight or flight mode because it's animal critter brain. So one of the things um, that I would do before getting on stage in front of a couple thousand people is I, I got this tip is I would get on stage and, and pause one, two, three, three seconds, take a breath. And then make eye contact for three seconds with one person. It's called the three-second rule. Wow. One, two, three. One, two, three. And if there's thousands of people, you just take a group. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then what happens is, is the, the critter brain calms down because mm. it's seeing one person. And then it's amazing because she would do that. And what what's happened is the audience was able to hear her message far more effectively. Mm. All she did was stand in front of the room, take a second and breathe before she began speaking. She did. Uh, she connected with a few people for three seconds as she spoke. One, two, three. One, two, three. And as she did that, she planted her feet. And then it was amazing because I just told her instead of staying, she usually she would stay. That woman would stay in one area, mm. and she when she was speaking, which is actually a reflection of her own thinking pattern. Wow. So <laughs> how someone moves is directly is, is impacts how they think. So we, I just had her walk outside the box she was walking in that she was just hanging out in. And then she walked into the audience, which is which is at a holographic level, which is actually her walking and getting more into the audience. Connected, yeah, so intimate, walked, yeah. yeah. So she walked into the audience and the audience became far more engaged in what she had to say. She became far more engaged. And ultimately, they wanted to know more about her. When we were able to to do this, it, 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 it collapsed time frames. It took her from, from kind of speaking and being fine to actually being far more effective in a shorter period of time and looking like she'd done it quite a bit. So for people listening to this, if you're ever going to present 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people, pause before you present. One, two, three, take a few seconds, connect with, with somebody's eyes for three seconds and keep doing that throughout your presentation. Hmm. And then instead of usually hanging back because you'll find people hang, walk into the audience and then and now – how uh, and do that and watch the difference it'll make. Another thing I've actually discovered is, is when when you're doing this, when you're selling one on one, hmm. as well. If you're at, if you're if you're talking, eighty percent of the time, it's probably not going to go very well. Hmm. Now, unless you're on a podcast or you're speaking, you have to generate information. Yeah. But when when selling or offering your services, it's the listening is more important. Yep. Than the words you say. Mm. People don't necessarily buy what you have to say. They buy what you embody. Mm. So the more work we can do to embody our message, this is why it's so like 
Like, this is why people are inspired by what you do because you're doing it. You embody your message. You know, you're like, have an adventurous life. You just got back from Bali. You're living it. It's in your cells, it's in your structure. So people are, yes, they, they, they like what you have to say, but they, they actually are more inspired by what you're embodying and what, mm. and what we can embody when we're living the life by our design is our message. And when we become our message, is when people who, who we're meant to work with find us, we don't mm. need to go out and hustle to get them. Yeah. Plus, we plus become a what I'm, what I'm hearing, this is gold. I, I love this. I want to uh, translate from what I'm hearing. Um, the, the, that's like just hitting home. People don't listen to what you say. They're not buying what you say. They are inspired. They're listening. They're, they're feeling into what you are embodying. And that, that's what really resonates with them. And so I think for me, a powerful question would be, what am I embodying today? What am I embodying as I'm getting onto this call? And also there, if I, if I give myself the mental check of, Hey, I'm embodying boldness. I'm embodying aliveness, being my greatest possible self then I don't have to effort, so to speak, to sell because I'm just being. And I think to, to have that mental check right before I'm about to go on a sales call is so profound because I just, hey, I just, I just be. I just show up and just me naturally being, trust in the process. The right people who are meant to you know, resonate with me and who I'm being and these values, they'll get it. They'll be like, fuck yeah, let's go. And the people yeah. who aren't in alignment with it, they'll be like, mm, eh, something's out of alignment. And I'll say, cool, bless you. Have the best life ever. Let me know what I can yes. do to support and don't take it personally because the right people will show up at the perfect time. And as long as you're being true to you, then they'll, they'll continue their journey. They'll, they'll be synergy. hundred percent, you know, and, and it's still important to learn uh, to communicate, mm -hmm. but remember communication yes. is not necessarily the language we use. Mm -hmm. It's a communication with the unseen. Yeah. And the way we, we transform that unseen world is we actually live in congruence with what we're here for. Mm. So, so for example, you know, if I'm sharing about, about um, speaking and, 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 and how to speak more effectively, I better be working on myself. Mm. I better be actually speaking. You know, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm a coach or consultant, I better have a coach. Yep. If I'm uh, talking about eating healthy, if I, I better eat my healthy myself. And, and I found that it's really important because it's the resonance that they actually invest in. Mm. It's, um, and, and the words are kind of like, they're, they're, they're important, but they're just not as important as, as who we are. You know, like, like one of my clients um, is also coached by Grant Cardone. Mm -hmm. So she hired Grant to work with him. And Grant's, uh, Grant Cardone is full on, you know, but he puts on like 10x, right? Yep. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to that. And that'll be really fun. But literally, um, she, he is like embodying his message of boldness mm. and living and anything's possible. And he's just doing that kind of work, you know, and, and, and whether you like him or not is irrelevant. What matters is that he's doing what he's here to do. And it's just, it's all over his being, you know, yeah. and, and then there's, and then there's some people in the jungles like uh, that, that I've sat with, with feathers on their heads that are amazing and they're just themselves and, and, and they'll tell you stories about how the feathers connected to the heavens and, and, mm. and the stars and, and, and they'll tell you stories around the fire and not in English, obviously. And then, <laughs> and, when they, and then when they sit by the, when they sit, you go fishing with them in the rivers and mm. they pull out the fish to like, they'll tell you stories about the star people and, and then they'll tell you, and then other people and the village and what's happening and, they are their message yes. and they live congruent with the message they're here to book. But the, then you get some Westerners who have their jobs and they tell you about, they, they're very smart. They're very smart. They've read a lot of books, mm -hmm. but there's a huge gap between what they say they want and actually going after it. And you know what? They're freaking miserable. Mm. And it's, it's really unfortunate. And it's usually, we have enough smart people in this world who know a lot. It's time we move from being smart and clever to wisdom. And to have wisdom is to realize we have a lot to learn. I have a lot to learn. There's so much more to learn. And the only way to actually begin to actually learn something is to realize we have so much more to learn and we don't know it all. And I had to come to terms with that with myself. Is I don't know. I don't even know where it's all going. I don't know how it fits together. Man, I'm okay with not knowing. Yeah. And in a sale... And when we're presenting in front of an audience, if you always have to know where it's going, the magic is gone. Mm. So what I have to share with you is the more you can survive the unknown in your presentations, in your sales, the more you can let the magic actually show up. But you must come to terms with the unknown within yourself. Mm. 
in order to sit in the unknown of an audience or sit in the unknown of a sale. And it's those moments in a sale when there's nothing to say. And it's that pregnant pause is where the work gets done is the sale actually happens. And it's those moments in front of an audience where there's a pause and where someone goes, aha, I get, the, I get what I was doing in my life. It's time to change my life. And they come to those terms. What made John F. Kennedy such an incredible presenter was not what he said. It was every single pause he had. But we must be okay with the unknown and not knowing where it's going to go next in order to survive those pauses. And what I love to share with people, yes, I love teaching people sales and speaking. But if they can survive the unknown within themselves, then they start to find the magic again in their lives. And then the magic happens around them. And then the moment they say, when someone asks them, well, how much is it to work with you? And they say $100,000. And there's a pregnant pause because they're okay with pausing. And the person goes, all right, I'm in. Let's do this. And they go, and, and then their whole relationship to what they do changes because they, they're actually charging appropriate price points for what they do. Mm -hmm. If that person, and, and for some people it sounds expensive, but but actually it's like, it's like, what if that person, they invest a hundred thousand dollars and that person makes an extra $2 million a year uh, in their company and then makes that much more impact. Do you, so do you, it's all relative. I had a question in terms of the word expensive. Do you, how do you feel about that word? Do you feel it's appropriate? Do you not have a strong charge either way? Cause uh, I think if people are using that, then it, it almost puts, puts things out of reach for them and judges it, it as less attainable. Yeah, I would agree. The word expensive is probably not that useful because everything's relative, you know? Um, I remember going to to Monaco and I was speaking, I wasn't, I wasn't speaking Monaco, I was, on a, I, was, I was in Europe and I stopped off in Monaco and um, there's the yachts everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, like everyone's got, it's just ridiculous. Like everyone's got, like yachts like Toyota's there. Like everyone's got a hundred million dollar <laughs> yacht with a yacht with a, with, a, with a helipad on it. And I'm like, this is nuts. And, and so, and to some people, they had, they, they were there, they had like two yachts. I was like, yes. Oh, was like, you know, like, I was like, what is going on? You know? And, and um, so, so that, to that person two there was one person in, in there that goes, you know, two yachts is expensive. So one person, a $10,000 boat is expensive. Mm -hmm. It's all relative, you know? Yeah. And so it's compared. So the question is compared to what? Yeah. Expensive mm -hmm. compared to what? So, so like, you know, you've done some incredible, you take people on retreats and things like that. And, and people might say, oh, it's expensive. But compared to what? Mm. Compared to mm. what? Like, that's ridiculous. What if it could change your whole life, where you're going, what you're doing? You're, not only that, your generations have come. Mm. Uh, I think it's actually a pretty good deal. Uh, but <laughs> what people don't get, what people don't get is when people invest with coaches or invest in retreats or invest in trainings, they're mm. not actually investing in the other person mm. as well. They're investing themselves. They're backing themselves. Mm. Some of the best investments I've made is to invest in myself. Wow. Yeah. And, and I think that that's detaching true. from, from like that, this is about me. That's, that's like one of the, one of the biggest shifts that high ticket salespeople can, can make is like, it's not about me. I'm, I'm presenting the opportunity because I know the impact it can make the general generational influence, the quality of life that it can shift for this person. And I think a lot of people struggle with putting their own ego in the deal and like, yes or no validates or invalidates their ego. Yeah. It's, it's going to be challenging. I know for myself in the earlier days when people didn't buy, buy from me or invest with me that I just take it personally, but yeah. now it's, it's okay. You know, I'm not here. I'm not here for everyone. And if there's anything I can share with people is you're not here for everyone. Mm. You're not, you know, and we're here for certain people. And the more we can work with those people, the better our life will go and better their life will go. Yeah. We're designed for those people. If we just, but it's really important that we live our imprint because that's an actual pattern. It's like a signature, it's a signature song, mm. you know, um, would they, they, I was, I was with the shit people, people in the jungle and, and they, they make these patterns and the women, make these uh patterns that, that that now to the everyday western person the patterns are sort of like beautiful lines of a pattern and but and they what well, they're actually songs and they're actually the notes of a song and these people are known to have to contain some of the universal songs like wow. the songs of the universe and um and whether you believe it or not it doesn't matter you know i mean go spend some time with them and you can see for yourself if you want so my point is is uh is that now it's 
I'm going to pause on that for a second. And I can tell you that um, there's skepticism. There's a, there's a lot of skepticism in this world. Yeah. And it's, 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 I think it's natural because there's so much uh, stuff going on. No one knows what's, a lot of people don't know what's real anymore, you know? But for a second, be skeptical, be a true skeptic and be skeptical about your skepticism. Mm. And consider that there's some wisdom in these, with these people about how to live. And so these songs are actually um, songs in a written form. And what they, what they say is that every soul has a song. Hmm. And it's a unique song. No song, is ever, no song is actually the same for every human being. And it's really important that we sing our song in the world. Hmm. And the way we sing our song in the world is we be our song. We live our song. And, and when we live our song, we actually imprint that song in the universe. And it's, that song's like a little, like we're all, there's billions of songs out there. But actually each song is like a little note in the canvas of life. And then when we all are able to sing a song, we actually sing in harmony again. And yes. then we actually are in harmony with nature again. And we, back, we go back to the original premise of what is to be a human being. And what it is to be a human being is to actually sing your song. Hmm. So what's our song? What's the person listening to this? Listen? What's your song? And part of our song, usually we have to go through some journey to get over our fears of being seen, being heard. And our, our ability to communicate is usually a fear point for people because they don't want to be seen, they don't want to be heard. And it's so amazing to work with people to help them bring their song out to the world. And the way they sing that song is not necessarily what they say. Hmm. It's how they live. And so if each person were to live congruent with, the, with what their song is, and they'd find the people they're here to work with, they'd impact the people they're here to work with, and they'd have the most fulfilling life possible. So, so it's really, really important, especially at this inflection point where we are with humanity today, hmm. to develop the courage in the face of the fear to sing your song. Sing your song with how you live, whatever that expression is for you. And when you discover and you drudge it up, you're going to have to go through and move through the fears and the concerns about what people will think. About, about, about some, you're going to lose some friends. Mm -hmm. Even if you're already doing like $10 million plus, you're going to realize that in your, in your businesses or hundred million plus, you're going to have to come to terms with is, is it doesn't matter. And that, and that you are not your business. Hmm. You know, we, uh, I, I see business owners that want to sell their companies at times and, and they get to the sales table and they want to sell their company. I love doing deals like this. And their whole identity is wrapped in their companies. <laughs> and they can't even let it go. But because maintaining the identity coherence is the most important thing for a human being. Hmm. There are two scariest things in a moment of a human being. Number one, losing everything they got. And number two, getting everything they want. And I think that, and I feel that many of us as human beings are afraid of getting everything we want. Mm -hmm. We're afraid of being our song. Because what if you actually went after it and you have to take responsibility for that gap? And I know that, that the ability to communicate goes right to the heart of human beings of where they're most afraid, which is to be seen and to be heard. And this is our time right now is so important for the people who actually care about, about people, about animals, about this life, to actually step into who they are mm -hmm. and do the work because we can't do this alone. And, and if we don't, unfortunately, fear is going to run this world. Mm -hmm. it's got to, it, fear has grip on this world so much. And it's time we move from fear to opportunity. We move from hustle to flow. Yeah. And when we do that, when we discover what's possible for a living, and life will become a celebration again. And everyone has the opportunity to celebrate their life again. And the way we celebrate it is by, is by singing our song, playing our part. You're celebrating your life right now yep. because you're doing what you're here to do. Yep. I'm celebrating my life right now because this is exactly what I should be doing. Nothing else. Yes. The people listening to this, if there's something else you should be doing, do it. Yes. Whatever that is. Because it's so important. It makes a difference not just for your, for your family's life, my life, Chris's life, and the world around us. Hmm. So please, please, please play your part. Absolutely. And I want to talk about the unknown, being comfortable in that unknown, uh, cultivating, creating opportunities for that to do that more often in our lives. Because I think when we do that, when we when we go into wander into the unknown, we'll recognize that, hey, everything works out like it's going to be OK, even when I don't know how it's all going to work. Uh, how would you recommend for your clients or people you work with to cultivate more of that unknown? What are what are some practices, a question, a guiding kind of philosophy or a compass direction? How do I create more unknown in my life and go live it and see that I survive? Good question. 
I'm going to hit a few different points because they all work together. Number one, it's going to be a different angle, a high leverage point. But we have to get, the more we can get our health in gear, the mm. more we can feel again. Mm. When our gut is filled with toxins and our gut is, is a direct, has a direct impact on how we feel. So I'm not a health expert, but I can tell you that I've seen many people who have very unhealthy guts and they don't do gut cleanses and, and, they, and they lose their touch with their intuition and they don't know why they feel sad or their mind is, their mind is constantly running. They, it's because they have unhealthy guts. So I would actually clean, I would do the work to clean your gut out because mm -hmm. then, then you can actually survive the, then the anxiety dissipates. And when, there's, when the anxiety goes away from a biological standpoint, then the, the unknown is not as scary. So number one, mm -hmm. clean your gut. Number two, spend more time in nature. Simple. Number three, go on more adventures. You know, I, I like literally I take, I'll, I'll go to, um, I'll, we rent an island in, in like, in parts of South America and, and bring executives all doing the million plus a year, at least get them together. And we take a boat out and, and we spend like four days together and discussing many different points, but you know, ra raising uh, like literally like taking a company to the next level challenges. We'll discuss um, giving back future trends, things of that nature. And I'll bring in other experts and things like that. And it's adventurous. Mm. So take adventures. And I will, would also say, so number one, gut. Number two, nature. Number three, take more adventures. Number four, um, get a mentor. Like yeah. Find someone to work with that challenges your frameworks. You know, our biggest area that hurts, um, that I've seen hurts executives is the areas that they're searching about. Mm -hmm. Those are our biggest blind spots. And, um, and also, also a big blind spot is that for the people that are listening to do a lot of personal development work, just get it done. You don't need mm. to understand why you sabotage your life. Just, just, just literally take action. They use having to understand why is another way to actually procrastinate. Yep. And, and, and so instead, instead the actions, the unapologetic actions will actually change your, will change your beliefs. You don't need to understand why in the first place. And even mm. if I were to ask you why it's the endless rabbit hole anyway, it's beyond comprehension. Hmm. And the last one is is um, is continuous meditation and excavation work and, and maybe some somatic work as well. Um, and for those of you that you know feel called, I mean, there is incredible wisdom in the jungles of Peru, and you have to be very careful. It's not for everyone, you know. Hmm. Some of these, um, and that that is because because our oh, breath work is very good as well. Breath hmm. work is releases DMT within, within naturally within the body and uh, and we you can get to a zero point in the unknown and it's pretty incredible so yeah that would be how to how to do it dude to share. there's so much so much gold there Jeffrey this is a blast man I could I feel like I could talk about this all day long um, one other thing I wanted to talk about just because you said it I think twice or three times um, yeah. collapsing time frames and like just being able to produce more results in less time I want you to share about like what what your philosophy is around that because I kind of hear like quantum uh, quantum transformation quantum leaps you know infinite possibilities tapping into that and creating huge shifts in a very short amount of time um, can you just tell us a little bit more about that sure i have a a person i work with her name's kate chiefy gray she's quite incredible actually and um watch watch this woman she's going to be she's already pretty huge but it's going to get well she's not huge maybe not in america yet but she's doing the work she's crushing it she's crushing it <laughs> and um she she has a background of over 500 plus ceremonies um so, like, has studied extensively researching psychedelics, very, very experienced. Has been taking people to the jungles for a long time. Uh, but her main focus is really like business entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And yes, she has that background, but but that's just kind of in the background. You know what I mean? She yeah. doesn't doesn't lead with that. And you know, she works with people like Grant Cardone and other incredible people as well. And she had a present. She had a presentation um, that she of the all day presentation she had to prepare for. Now, this woman doesn't work within this woman doesn't work within the normal confines because she's in a flow state mm. and and she goes and she came over we had one day one day which would usually take one day to build a a whole day long presentation take people from where they are to where they go one day 
And also, normally that would take I don't know how many weeks. If you don't even if you don't know what you're doing, it's gonna take like for, for a long time. Imagine for, you're really preparing for a presentation that's twelve hours, that's ten hours long, and you don't know what you're doing. You have no coach, no mentor, and you gotta put some slides on. Your slides would just be full. Of Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, we got we got one day to do this. So I was like, okay, cool. And then and then she also had to film. Um, she also had to film for her event about like 10 different videos. And this had to happen in one, in one day as well. <laughs> so I watched her and I was so impressed. She, she called up our, um, our friend who does filming, professional filming. And she arranged to have him come over to the house and set up a set while we were working on our presentation. She also arranged, I, I, we, we also arranged a graphic designer to come over to the house at the same time. Okay. So 10 a.m. it starts. The film guy shows up. He sets up the set while the graphic designer is there. I'm sitting with her, starting to pump in, starting to actually put these slides together. Okay, because she knows how to ask time because she hired someone who has done it before, so that's mm -hmm. the first rule. So she hired me. We put it together, right? Mm -hmm. And I started transferring the slides over, designing it on the fly, having conversations while the film guy is doing the setup. Now, what you don't know is this film guy has danced in Sundance five times. He's done the work as far as medicine work as well. Hardcore, beautiful guy. Does not believe in. He, he stands in the end as possible and lives that way. Damn. Okay? A warrior. And so it's me, her, them all in this room. And so he's building the set. Then we're making the slideshows. And then we decide, okay, let's go, let's go spend some time in meditation. So we all go down for like 20 minutes, do a meditation about intention, everything. And the, the evening went on until about 8 at night. We had incredible like – I said we had we had vegan ice cream, we had vegan brownies, we had chocolate. There was like music on. The films got done. The presentation got done, and what resulted was an entire presentation got done. About you know ten ten little films for her for her campaign got finished. The movies got then, and then the whole thing was finished, and we had a freaking great time doing it. So anything is possible, and so mm -hmm. when you get outside of time, and the way you get outside of time is you actually is is you actually be willing to break most of the paradigms of what is achievable hmm. in time. And, and you got to get in a flow state. And the way you get in a flow state is by meditation, hmm. is by intention, and by spending time with people who also are also willing to do the same. Because if I would have had one person in room, that's not possible. There's hmm. no way to get that done. That person, first of all, wouldn't want to hang out with them. Second, it wouldn't have got done. So we spent time with people who are willing to break the paradigms as possible. That's why it's so important to collaborate with people who stand in the anything's possible. It's the crazy mm. ones that are here to change the world. That's right. That's right, man. So, yeah, so it was amazing. And she got it done, and it's, you know, the presentation soon. That's epic. Epic. Jeff, this is gold, man. I want to wrap it up with telling people how they can stay connected with you, man. What are the next steps they can take with you? Um, they should go to up-level your sales. Up-level your sales. I built this whole 14 tips on how to, how to sell, increase your sales on one-on-one um, -on -one and on stages. So if anyone that wants to increase their sales one-on-one -on -one or on stages, uplevelyoursales.com. They okay. can go there as a free download. Um, they, if they want to, if they want to go to my website, it's jeffreyslater.com. Mm -hmm. And there's some other, I have free audio books and like that. I just am really grateful that you gave the space to be able to communicate this message to people. And I really am grateful for the audience that listened to this. And um, yeah, so thank you so much. Mm. Dude, this has been epic, man. I, I, I've loved our connection, our time. I'm, I'm really excited to grow our relationship, man. I see you um, doing some amazing, amazing work in the world, just like igniting leaders who are already on fire and doing well and just helping them get to that next level, man. I think exactly. that's, that's so, so important work that's being done. Not just the people who help people get started, but the people who are like already on fire and say, hey, here are the tweaks that you can make to really just explode your business, get to a million, 10 million, 100 million dollars. Yeah really deliver a message, take your, your communication, your speaking to a whole nother level, convert, you know, like two X, the, the percentage five X, whatever it is yeah. of, of audiences to create entirely like new results that people didn't even dream were possible. But when they suspend that disbelief, when they go into the unknown, when they uh, get back into wonder in touch with their childlike wonder, like that's, that's where you really thrive and help them thrive as well, man. I think it's, it's really, really cool. Jeffrey. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you, man. I appreciate you being here. Have an amazing day and we'll see you soon, okay? Take care.